in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Brothers and sisters, the God who promised you will bring it to pass. Oh, yes. I have seen men celebrate the victory of trusting God. I will hold on. If I perish, I perish. If God said it, I believe him. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. God is speaking to you. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Listen, brothers and sisters, hear me encourage you tonight. Be patient with God. Be patient. Be patient with God. It didn't take you one day to build that understanding. Just continue with God. Apostle, it's been three years I've been coming for Koinonia. I can't even pay my transport. Don't worry. The word of God is working. The day the miracle will come, not even your prayer will stop it. God says it's too late. When your mindset has built it, no. A day will come. In one month, you will see cars in Koinonia. You'll be like, oh, it's a season. It's not a season. The, if the car is being given to you now your colleagues are saying my brother won't you buy a car don't worry don't go and kill yourself trying to get loan anywhere just calm down leave the issue of loan and stay with God take your Okada with honor and give God praise the day to come it will come in a grand style I assure you You have only two shirts. I've noticed this is the only thing you wear. Well, I'm not ashamed of it. At least I'm not a thief. I will iron the shirt. It's faded. But I thank God you are seeing it now. I was looking at some of my photos today. So I'm not even very... I looked at some of them and I said, Ah! God, you are faithful. What are we saying? You are so faithful. Listen. Let me give many of you a message of hope. At your level, I was worse than how you look now. So you better encourage yourself and say, if I'm at this level and I'm already smiling like this, it means when I get to a level higher than where I am, is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Number four. What's the third price? Is the price of being skillful write it down the price of being valuable the price of being skillful Proverbs chapter 18 verse 16 it's become an anthem in koinonia the gift of a man and I add the gift of a man that's been identified developed and added to with excellence take note not just the gift of a man the raw material potential gift no sir it won't bring you before great men the gift of a man an ability a potential identified developed are we together now and then alongside excellence when you serve your gift with excellence the bible says it will make room hallelujah and will bring you before great men nobody celebrates potential we recognize potential but we celebrate potential that has been developed the world we live in rewards value you must be able to rise to a point where you provide value that is needed and useful 
not value that you know your value must be needed and useful the kingdom of God is built upon a reward system listen carefully the kingdom of God is built upon a reward system money being only one of the rewards ease is a reward for being valuable are we together now very important Proverbs chapter 13 verse 15 it says good understanding procures favor good understanding gives favor good understanding is like a pregnant woman when she gives birth the name of her child is favor it says but the way of the transgressor a transgressor is not a sinner the way of a transgressor is hard hardship has a formula you can predict it good understanding give her favor but the way of transgressors is what you must be skillful nobody stays close to me and refuses to be skillful you must be skillful we train the leaders in this ministry to be skillful the workers everybody you must be skillful oh i can sing wonderful but will don muen call you because of your voice have you worked upon yourself what do you know about singing the truth is that many of us at least to an appreciable level we have discovered areas here and there in our lives but the challenge for many of us is the mental and physical inertia that laziness to develop ourselves to a point where we get to a point of unconscious competence everybody shout it after me say competence say it again competence let me tell you something i've learned about competence competence defies age gender tribal and racial um, differences and, and all of and sentiments I have seen people rewarded regardless of where they came from I've seen people rewarded and blessed different fields listen anything you are doing if you do not plan to be a leader in that field don't do it are we together I will never commit my energy to anything that I will not be a leader in whether it is ministry whether it is business you may start small but your the those who are rewarded in any field are the leaders of the field in the academia the professor collects the highest salary why because he has been able to upgrade his mind and access value to that point where he deserves it you may be a student or a lecturer or a staff or a worker but if you have not risen to that level of competence you may never have the privilege of access make up your mind that I will be competent say it I will be competent say it again I must be competent the law of value your value when developed decide who pursues you your value when developed decides who pursues you Mike Mudok teaches that your a problem is an invitation for a reward. A problem is an invitation for a reward. Until there is a problem that you can solve, I teach our school of ministry students that you are unnecessary. Herein lies the mystery of people ignoring you. When you are not valuable, you will not be a friend to anybody. Write this down. Discover and develop problem-solving skills. Discover and develop problem-solving skills. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored be a master brothers and sisters what we do that you call ministry is solving problems you know I've said it again and again many people get angry when men of God are blessed because many people carry they propose that understanding that men of God are lazy people who just receive free money from people. 
If they believe that men of God eat the church tithes and offerings and they buy cars and buy houses, it may be true for some, but it's not so for most. Men of God become blessed because they are offering value. That the value is spiritual in context. Now I am teaching you, is that true? I'm reshaping your mind. I'm adding value to you. The system of the kingdom is every time you dispense value, whether you sell it or give it free, you are authorized to be rewarded. Are we together now? You only have a problem with a man who you see blessings in his life, whether financial and otherwise, and you cannot see the value equivalent. So when I look at a billionaire like Bill Gates, I see the value equivalent. That's why we don't harass him. If I look at a criminal who is not offering any value, yet his bank account is fat, then I know that the equation does not balance. Before you ever criticize a blessed man, examine the value. Now, you may not have risen to a level of perception where you think what he's doing is valuable enough to bring reward, but it still does not matter. Everybody say, I will be valuable. Say it again, I will be valuable. I will be skillful. Become a master at something, koinonia and wave poverty goodbye become a master at something if i ask you what are you a master at and you cannot tell me in one word at best you will wallow around the realm of mediocrity and never rise up to be something the concept of being multi-talented is good but those who are masters in life are known for something there must be a skill that sets you out then other skills are auxiliary supporting skills that lift you are we together now i'm not only a man of god and many other things but most people know me as a man of god and they may think that's all i am and that's all that i do there are many other aspects to my life but there is always a skill that opens the door that skill that brings you to the table of greatness then you leverage upon that and other gifts and talents are now supporting is that true yes you must be valuable now the oil in nigeria and africa is having a lot of problem fluctuations here and there and you can see that the whole nation is moving down that's a sign that we were never offering real value are we together if we we're offering real value the depleting of the oil prices should not affect our GDP necessarily because there should be skilled labor there should be captains of industry and people who are skilled because we are largely depending on oil there is very little reward this uh, our society pays very very little reward on meritocracy the people the those who deserve things are not rewarded but in certain parts of the world where you are content even if they hate you that reward for sure will come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. May you be valuable. Being valuable will drive shame out of your life. I tell you this. Being valuable, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. It says, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. There is a relationship between ignorance and shame. Are we together? There is a relationship, there is a correlation between ignorance and shame. Those who are angry, insulting every blessed person, insulting those who are making things happen in society are those who have not paid the price to identify their giftings, their ability, their skill, their talent, and to invest time, resources, and humility to build themselves to a point where they become leaders of their field. I've made up my mind that in everything I'm involved in, I will be flawlessly competent. It's a commitment I've made to myself. And I pray that you make that commitment tonight. Never settle. The enemy of your next level is the success of your last level. Be careful. Failure does not make people fail. It stimulates them to go high. But the moment you begin to achieve results, there is a chance that you will be complacent. I will be valuable. Become a master solution provider. There is no mystery about wealth. It's not a miracle. It's not magic. It's a system, a reward system of the kingdom. Remember that I said your value on its own cannot bless you. It must be developed. Everybody say developed. There is a season of refining your value. One 
gentleman sent me a text in the course of the week and said apostle i'm starting ministry i don't know exactly what to do but i believe that as i start i think i hope i'm getting what he said correctly i'm starting and i know that god will bless me just speak a word i said no sir it's not a word that moves ministry a word is over you then principles guide you as you walk obviously that gentleman will not last one month he will be angry at the neighboring churches and be angry at members who come and go and not know why they are going you hear people complain why will you come to my church and receive miracles and go away and they think the solution is just prayer man of God changed my story yes God can change your story but the men of God or the men that come to your church are human beings they respond to value by the time you continue to give people information that are needed and useful and they watch their lives transform the Bible says he makes me lie down in green pastures you cannot make them lie down but you can make the pastures green then they will come and lie down they never visit green pastures when it is truly green they lie down information that is spiritual information that is transforming information that is needed and useful well researched and intelligently communicated backed up by the anointing of the spirit that's the kind of information that stays in today's world and in today's church any other information outside this let me tell something with members members are very funny they can say ah you know you say something that is complete rubbish and somebody stands up and says my god and while they are doing that you are so impressed with yourself and next sunday he never comes again members for you are we learning how was my preaching today ah, i mean i can't even start i mean it was it was it was strange and instead of the man of God to be honest enough to admit that and try and go back and trust God to help, he said, You mean it? I mean, that's that's he says, sir. This message is a, is a bestseller. And then the mem the person does not come. The moment somebody opens a church near you in a heartbeat, they will leave you. Because they were never loyal to you. They are loyal to themselves and their commitment to their transformation. And if you lose relevance and you cannot be a strategic contributor to their growth, spiritually and otherwise, then there's no reason why they listen to you. I've committed myself that nobody listens to me and just says this person, well, well just a daft. No, 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 no. It takes a lot of study. It takes a lot of labor, research, commitment. I'm committed to doing it. This is the key to remaining relevant. Are we together? You must be skillful. Write this scripture down. We're not turning for time's sake. Genesis 41. Um, okay, let's just look at two verses. Genesis 41. The whole scripture is from verse 14 to 46. That's the whole context from verse 14 to 46. But please give us 14 and 31. This was Joseph now. The Bible says, Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Are we together? Now he began to interpret Pharaoh's dream and then to proffer a solution. And in verse 33. Now therefore let Pharaoh look out for a man. Look at a politician. After he finishes marketing himself. He said, Pharaoh, it's not like I'm saying I want to be the one. But you, since you are smart, who has committed himself to being that valuable? Look for a man who is discreet and wise. And when you find such a man, mm, when you find such a man, do what? He, sees, he programmed his own promotion. When you find that man, this is the level of result that should be given to that man. Set him over the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown you this, there is none so discreet and wise. Everybody say mastery. It's leadership. This is called leadership. Pace setting, trailblazing. That no, this is not competition. This is the reward that comes when you labor and stand out. Competition is in the realm of mediocre. You never see planes clashing in the air because there's enough space. It's cars that move around and have traffic for a very long time. You seldom see traffic in the air. There is space for champions. Hallelujah. Say, I'm one of them. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, For as much as God has showed you this, there is none so discreet and wise. Let's continue reading. 
um, thou shalt immediately be over my house and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled only in the throne will I be greater than you go ahead and Pharaoh said unto Joseph see I have, I have said thee this day over all the land of Egypt did he ask him what tribe did he ask him are you a Jew or you are this you have solved my problem you have a reward and Pharaoh took off his ring the ring in his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck go ahead he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried before him bow the knee and he made him ruler over the land of Egypt let's see something interesting that happened now and Pharaoh said unto Joseph I am Pharaoh and without thee shall no man authority through competence shall no man lift his hand or foot in the land of Egypt let's finish it two more verses and Pharaoh called Joseph's name but whatever that is that's a very long name there and he gave him to wife Asena free wife getting a wife becomes easy when you are valuable this is the revelation God is giving us yes you can clap getting a wife becomes almost effortless when you are valuable God programmed that way not everybody will produce the same result but there must be a token a token a sign that you are going somewhere and Joseph went over the land of Egypt the last verse how old was he and Joseph was what this is somebody's lifetime achievement he did it at age 30 if you got born again at 30 you are behind time I teach on the graph of life you can get my message that's a sign that you need to catch up and when he stood before Pharaoh king of Egypt and he stood before Pharaoh king of Egypt and Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the land of Egypt your competence can give God space to lift you your competence can give God space to lift you make up your mind to be valuable pray in one minute before we talk about the last point and then we'll pray father in the name of Jesus I receive grace to be skillful lift your voice and pray plant in me a resentment for mediocrity plant in me a resentment for average being a local champion being satisfied by little results being celebrated by mediocres competing myself with people who are not even doing anything I receive grace are you praying in the name of Jesus I declare I decree and I declare go ahead and pray Lord I will rise in business I set myself to become a leader in that field in the mighty name of Jesus in my career I will rise to a managerial level I will not stop till I reach the apex I will not celebrate the mediocrity that has come with my background if you're a northern and pray hard pray twice in the name of Jesus the mediocrity that comes with my territory I, I declare that I break through it if I need to take certifications I set myself to personal development if I need to upgrade myself in knowledge I receive grace if I need seminars and training I receive grace if I need to submit myself consciously for mentorship I receive grace grace to follow those who through faith and patience I will not waste my day again I will turn my laptop to a university I will turn my Android device to a university I take advantage of the information on the internet in ministry in business I find out the leaders in my field and I press to know what they knew hallelujah let me tell you how to know you are becoming a leader when somebody is following you if there is nobody following you to learn from you you are not a leader you claim you are a businessman show me those who you have raised because wisdom is justified by her children most people who follow you are people you have mentored unconsciously you were minding your business producing results and your result became too obvious to be ignored the book of Mark says all men seek for thee please if you truly are part of this ministry resent mediocrity are we together resent mediocrity doesn't matter whether you graduated with a pass up graduated with whatever you can re-engineer yourself re-educate yourself 
then you will change your finances then you will change that talk that 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 statement they always make they will continue to jay at you and say Saul killed 1,000 David killed 10,000 competition will never leave the habitation of mediocres there is a realm you must rise to repeated mistakes are a sign that you are in ignorance before you take out any physical step again go for knowledge number four pray in the spirit for one minute thank you lord jesus your word is changing me i receive grace hallelujah the fourth price and will be done for today please i want to have everybody's attention because what i'm about to teach you is a very big secret most of you may think you know it but i want you to listen to me with your spirit listen with your heart the price of building quality relationships is the fourth price you must pay if you want to establish extraordinary results in your life the price of building quality relationships relationships are advantageous connections connections relationships are advantageous connections the easiest way to be wealthy and to be blessed in life is through relationships i've taught you this i'm repeating it so that you will understand the easiest way to be blessed in life brothers and sisters is through relationship relationships are powerful relationships are irrefutable there is no champion without quality relationships relationships are currencies they can buy anything money can buy anything money can buy relationships can buy it the only reason why money is useful is because there is a human being at the other end to collect it that human being can choose to say my relationship has paid for it i've said it again if you use money to pay for everything in life you are not working in wisdom now money is only one of many currencies relationship being the highest at the keda second only to godliness and your spiritual connection let me tell you something of all the currencies that men used to purchase results in life physical money notes currencies is the least of them there are seven currencies i hope that by god's grace i'll teach it next year seven currencies we use to purchase results in life everything in life is bought it's just that money is not the only currency relationship is a priceless currency higher than gold higher than the dollar lend this god called abraham alone and lot who was related went with him that was the only thing lot did and he became stupendously wealthy relationships can determine the next course of your results and lack of it can keep you stagnated almost for a lifetime please i want you to learn this the presence of a quality relationship in your life can define the next level of your success lack of it can stagnate you sometimes even for a lifetime you are one quality relationship underline quality you are one quality relationship away from your next level of results believe me on this you are one quality relationship away from the next level of your results you know all of this already my emphasis is not just to talk about the relationships but to be able to guide us on principles i've noticed believers know very little about relationships this is why many of us have been grounded although skilled a few scriptures four of them one amos chapter 3 verse 3 please write it down the bible says can two walk together except they be agreed modern day interpretation two cannot walk together unless they be compatible there must be similarity in their paradigms and understanding Two people cannot become friends when there is a large difference in their perspectives. There must be similarity. 
you must believe similar things about God, about life, about money, about family. It qualifies you to be friends. Second scripture. Very, very touching scripture. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24. It tells us that he who desires friends, you must sow that seed. Proverbs 18 and verse 24 lets us know that relationship is a harvest. Meaning that until you sow that seed, there is no harvest of relationship. It says a man that had friends must first show himself what? Friendly. And trying to show yourself friendly will require you for bearing and even sticking closer than a brother. Most of us want the harvest of friendship and relationships and we never sow the seeds. You don't go to a farm at, around this time waiting to harvest when you did not plant. Relationships are harvests. We must sow the seeds. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. Read with me. One, two, read. He that walketh with the wise shall do what? But a friend of foolish friends, what will he get? It didn't say foolish people don't have a future. That's not what the Bible is saying. The Bible says you are a product of your environment. He that walks with the wise shall himself be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed please write this down everyone relationships do not maintain themselves relationships do not maintain themselves it takes commitment on the part of all the parties involved to maintain relationships relationships do not maintain themselves this is a fallacy that many of us must be delivered from relationships do not maintain themselves it takes commitment on the part of all not some all the parties involved to maintain relationships please listen to this and you will be surprised that you will multiply your success relationships do not maintain themselves Apostle, people don't like me. Show me the seeds you are sowing. The seeds of friendship. Are we together now? Apostle, nobody wants to walk. This koinonia people say, they say greet one another. They don't even greet me. No, sir. How to maintain relationships. This is the crux of the teaching. How to maintain relationships. I want to give you seven keys every one of us make sure you learn these keys if you truly learn these keys i give you a guarantee those outside is dark but make sure you're writing those online connecting everywhere i want to show you the reason why your favor might be delayed number one the first key to maintaining relationships is avoid competitive jealousy write it down key number one you cannot sustain quality relationships until you are ready to avoid like a cancer competitive jealousy we're going to read all the scriptures every scripture i'm giving you are going to read it. so media please help us on that wise i'll give you a number of scriptures proverbs 14 verse 30 quickly please then we'll look at 27 verse 4 proverbs 14 and verse 30 the bible says a sound heart is the life of the flesh are we together read the b part it says but envy or jealousy is what rottenness it has a a disease effect to your bones let me tell you something competitive jealousy destroys you jealousy is like a wound competitive jealousy destroys you Believers are very, very competitive people, jealous people. You bought this car, I buy it too. You bought this suit, I buy it too. If, if, you know, I'm not just saying it for Koinonia alone, but this is something I've observed. This is one of the reasons why many believers worldwide, especially in the African continent, we are obsessed with the passion to prove points. And so we do not have the patience to allow time 
and preparation to come to fruition men of god compete with themselves and all kinds of things there there are healthy dimensions of competition when you're speaking from a business perspective and you can challenge yourself and spoil yourself to excellence but the church has a plague of competitive jealousy members koinonia is quiet thank you jesus because that that means that the holy spirit is pounding on this is exactly how result i love you too much and i must teach you this proverbs 27 verse 4 many of us fall sick being envious of people listen very very powerful description look up please it says wrath is cruel that means it's not good don't do it anger is outrageous but compared you know in comparison who is able to stand before envy in other words envy is worse than anger wrath is cruel anger is outrageous but who is able to stand before envy envious people never get results in their lives they live their lives in bitterness and pain could this be why many of us do not maintain valuable relationships last scripture proverbs 14 verse 30 okay we already have that we read it already proverbs 27 verse 4 we'll just leave those two avoid competitive jealousy say in the name of jesus i receive grace to be patient until the word of god manifests in my life i reject jealousy i cast away jealousy from my life lift your voice and pray in one minute it will sting your ego but brothers and sisters this is god speaking pray the spirit of competitive jealousy i take it away from my life please pray envious of my workers at work envious of my business contemporaries no envy is sin it's not just bad it is sin sin against yourself you depress yourself there are many people that don't sleep in the night this lady was my junior in school she's now married and i'm not married you are envious this person i was the person that that trained this person he's now a millionaire i'm no longer i'm a pastor this is my son it's all those jealousy and envy kill it now lift your voice and pray Shabbatato sekata in the name of jesus i come against it satan you will not destroy my propensity to quality relationships competitive jealousy god bless you number two very quickly what is the second key to maintaining relationships i was surprised when i was studying this i found out that a, a research was done and it was it was told that one of the top three reasons why relationships do not last is because of evil speaking backbiting and gossip so the second point is avoid gossip backbiting and evil speaking the bible calls it ill speaking statistically you can go and check it the top reasons why relationships break give us titus chapter 3 verse 2 please and then proverbs chapter 6 will read from verse 16 to 19 avoid gossip backbiting speaking evil unfortunately and with all due respect to the body of christ for some reason the church in nigeria i don't know if it's because of our african background we are experts at gossip experts at backbiting experts at speaking evil to speak evil of no man are we there to be no brawlers but gentle showing all meekness unto all men to speak evil of no man it is amazing how there is an appetite in people to talk ill and evil of people there are believers that come to church only to come and find out what is wrong are we together you speak evil of people no. we speak evil of our parents we speak evil of leaders pastors business people we speak evil of our government we speak evil of anybody 
if it is not you every other person has a problem you will never maintain good relationships like that and you will lose out on opportunities for cheap victory is God speaking to us avoid gossip gossip is a great sign of weakness gossip is a sign of mediocrity it's a sign of lack of confidence in yourself it's a spirit I'm sorry to say it and please don't be offended most of us the homes where we grew up from that's the norm that's where we got this mindset everybody talks about everybody gossip backbiting speaking evil Proverbs chapter 6 from verse 16 to 19 Proverbs chapter 6 just write it and look up I'll read it these six things does the Lord hate so God hates it these six things does the Lord hate seven are an abomination unto him we're reading to 19 number one a proud look number two a lying tongue number three hands that shed innocent blood number four a heart that devised wicked imagination there is such a heart feet that be swift in running into mischief 19 a false witness that speaketh lies and the last of them is what he that soweth discord it didn't say among men among who you find them in every church and every ministry experts are joining the heads of nice people together hey jimmy i i wouldn't have told you but i've, I've do you know have you noticed that every time koinonia comes if there's a way pastor alpha looks at you <laughs> i will just you about it later it's devilish it's devilish it's devilish you are sowing seeds of discord there are many people who were happy friends until a wrong information came in between them there are husbands and wives that live in hatred because a third party was introduced adam and eve were living in harmony until there is a third voice you must be careful third voices ruin quality relationships how many of you god wanted to lift you until somebody came in with a report and say sorry you. how many ladies would have been married now but someone who sows seeds of discord. Sorry, I, I overheard somewhere that you like this lady. Are you, are you blind? I just came to advise you. Are you blind? This lady that has lived like this, she was my neighbor growing up. So it's, it's something I know. Is that how you hate your destiny? And the brother goes back. Be careful because when we pray during miracle services we pray very wild prayers and tell god to do those any and everything standing on the way of people's progress and you must be careful that that's not you because the prayer will be answered anyway are we together he that soweth discord do you know that gossip can be habitual meaning even if there is nothing to say because you have trained your mind you will always you just see somebody pass and say ah let me tell you something i didn't plan to talk but no don't laugh almost everybody is guilty of this so when it's time to pray we will cry before god first for yourself and say lord i'm guilty i am very very guilty are we together yes worship team standing to worship I you see how this guy is standing that, that's the guy i'm telling you hey you don't know that guy i saw him around that area yesterday he likes it he likes it. what is your business for heaven's sake what is your business are we together yeah what is your business gossip backbiting ill-spoken words you just hear that somebody is rising you say who who is rising no i need to do something about it don't become like that ill-spoken words the appetite you see every time you talk bad about people i want you to remember that you are destroying god's creation you must stop it you put yourself in the shoe of the ones you are destroying when you tear down people and destroy them how many people tear down men of god you don't think about their churches what happens to their members while you are destroying them 
what happens when you are talking ill of a pastor what happens when you are tearing him down what happens when you are insulting the pastor's wife think of what happens to her reputation it affects her leadership where experts are doing it it's a habit that I trust that God will break from us because many of us this is what drives friends from us come pastor Alpha God brings your destiny helper he holds your hand in two weeks in two weeks everybody knows everything about you ah I came to apostle's house I saw him counting dollars don't, don't mind that quietness oh apostle is rich you think it's an information you are giving and God is saying you see this person you are not a candidate for my help carry your trouble and go away and say ah, ah but God is going to help me no we have destroyed our lives destroyed opportunities how many people would have gotten jobs if they knew how to keep quiet do you know some people so gossip that they gossip even about themselves they have it's an obsession if there is nothing to talk about you can even be the person to act the drama yourself I beat my wife I just want you to know honestly and you see listen the thing about gossip and ill speaking please listen this is a lesson for all of us to learn the thing about gossip is it is like lost whoever is the object there is the one you will tell the information to including a child imagine me now coming to talk assuming pastor alpha has a child that is grown but because there is an appetite you are walking in a house and you are now talking kite hey, boy this is your father now you are poisoning the mind of the child what do you think happens now are we together we must repent from the spirit of backbiting and gossip romans chapter 16 verse 17 please give it to us quickly gossip terrible backbiting terrible now i beseech you brethren mark them which cause division and offense is contrary to the doctrine that we have learned do what to them what is the scriptural remedy avoid them avoid them listen hold on let me teach you something be careful when you partner with gossip because very soon the person gossiping will need favor from the one he's talking about and you will be the scapegoat to use and secure that favor a typical example is workers people who work in their profession your boss your superior they come and meet you and say this is our boss said so 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 and so and they gossip when promotion comes what do you think happens you say hey, boss i i just came to appreciate you and to confess something sir let me be honest i've been talking about you you see he has bailed himself abby but sir this is even the milder part of the story the worst one is i'm about to tell you someone else who joined me because he's looking for promotion and all of a sudden a boss that says see me by three o'clock you come back and say pack up your bags because next week you are leaving this company why sir please leave my office seed of discord gossip is cancerous backbiting 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 you must avoid it like a cancer number three the third way to maintain relationships avoid offense avoid offense what is offense the ease with which you get irritated angry and resentful is called offense offense is a measure of the ease your ease of volatility there are people who get offended you can just look at them and uh -uh. it's like this your cloth did you iron it well and they say you are insulting my pedigree what no 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 no. there are people who are volatile the ease with which you get irritated angry and resentful is called offense first corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 First Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 talking about love now it says love does not behave itself unseemingly seeketh not her own is not easily provoked or anger if you are truly walking in love 
I don't care what your background is. You will not be easily angered. There are people who get angry very easily. Very easily. Bros, how now? He said, me. I'm 10 years older than you. I am. Please don't think that because me. On a very good day, won't you be saying money? Easily offended. You see, offense is a product of judging things from the lens of your own perception of yourself. When you judge things from a faulty perception, things will be interpreted from the lens of your own limitation. Offense. Refuse to be offended. Refuse to be offended. There will be occasion for offense in every relationship. From a marriage relationship, a business relationship, ministerial relationship. You must make up your mind as a choice that the blessings that I seek to receive from the relationships God is bringing in my life is greater than any offense. Offense destroys. Because you see, when you are offended, one of the many ways you act is speech. And every time you speak with a heart of offense, usually the Holy Spirit is not in charge of that conversation. You will talk in the flesh. You can make it means that you cannot withdraw again. Many people have lost precious relationships because if they were a little temperous, they would have regained it. Many people have lost business opportunities because of that. Offense is an advice. It's an encouragement. The Bible says one of the signs that characterize the end of days is that many shall be offended. Let me tell you, you are not a true human being if you wake up and in 24 hours there is no reason for offense. Especially if you are a leader. People do things that should get me offended every day. I do things that should get people offended every day. An example is what I'm teaching now. Are we together now? There are things that get people offended. You must make up your mind that I will not be offended. How many men of God get offended and they can preach? They get offended at home. They come and climb the stage and you know that that preaching is a lashing down of something that happened between them and their wives and their children. The kind of examples they are giving are not relevant to any other member unless their family. So you know that this is a this guy is just talking to his wife or the neighbor or the worker using the pulpit. Offense makes you small. Offense makes you cheap. Offense reduces your worth. Let me tell you something about offense. Most of those who offend you, they know they offended you. The goal is that their joy is in your reaction. Most of those who offend, offend intentionally. But when you grow above it, you demonstrate that you are living at a higher level of living. After this service now, on your way home, an angry driver, an angry man, something will happen that will offend you. But you must make up your mind and say, Satan, you are a liar. I already see your hand. I will not be offended. Say in the name of Jesus, I reject offense. Is God speaking to us? Number four, how do we maintain relationships? Practice forgiveness. Practice forgiveness. Mark chapter 11 verse 25. Then Ephesians 4.32. Please give it to us. Mark 11.25. Practice forgiveness. I don't know one relationship, including the one of you and God, that can thrive without forgiveness. It's not God you are forgiving. God is forgiving you all the time. Because there are people who really are angry with God. Okay, I forgive you, God. Let's get back into the relationship. And when ye stand praying, most prayer warriors miss this. Let me tell you why there is hardship in people's prayer lives. It's not all about demons. And when ye stand praying, what is the rule? Forgive, comma, if ye have ought against any, that your Father in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. It's amazing how we pile up people in our hearts. Some of us have physical books physical books like police reports where you write this sister jane embarrassment sam laughing at me pastor alpha shouted at me the other day while he was preaching and you write everything 
protocol department. <laughs> Their own star, star, star. They offended me. Ushers, I was falling before everybody and they were watching me. I injured myself and you write it down. Then you leave everything and say, Father, don't you know that I'm human? And God says, really? It's like a small child that begs you for something. Then you give him and say, give back and he refuses. That's exactly what we do. You can never live in this life without forgiveness. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness is giving. Forgiveness is giving. It is giving pardon and mercy. Forgiveness. A disposition where you are ready to let go even before the offense happens. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is a, is a dimension of giving. If you are not a forgiver, you are not a giver. Not forgiving is one way of manifesting greed. It's not just refusing seed. Forgiveness. But let me balance very quickly. You don't forgive just to make peace. Forgiving to make peace is one of the benefits of forgiveness. But the primary purpose of forgiveness is to release yourself so you can move forward. Because there are times the people you forgive are still not ready to receive it. Let me be very honest and let me balance. Forgiveness is only useful when there is repentance, a willingness to turn away. Forgiveness is useless to the person you are forgiving if there is no repentance. It is useful to you. Let me show you what offense does. Um, can I use someone? Sam, please come. Watch this. This is what offense does. I want to move forward, but I think Sam is standing my way. And so I'm trying to push him. Will I move forward holding him? I'm trying to hold Sam. I can't move forward myself. This is what forgiveness is. He can be there, not even deserving it. But I release him so that I can move forward. I can leave him and his trouble there. If he accepts that he is wrong and turns, then we make peace and we can work together. If he refuses, I still forgive so that I can move forward. Let me tell you, the most wounded in the refusal to forgive is the offender or the offended. The person who was offended is the one who is most wounded. It is painful that the person who even offended you is not even aware and plans to do it again because it was a product of mindset. So your assignment is to have a disposition where you forgive. As a leader, people will offend you every day. People will do wrong things every day. You must forgive. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I receive grace to forgive. Say, I let go everyone I'm holding in my hands. Holding people. Hold them in your heart. I will never forgive my mother except I may have said my own. And you can never receive blessing. I will never forgive my father for what my father has done. If I have a knife, I will kill him by myself and say, Daddy, die. I'm the one killing you. I will never forgive that person who raped me when I was four years old. I will never forgive that, uh, what they call it now, that brother. He went out with me and broke and scattered my heart. Please forgive so that you can move forward. Forgive so that you can move forward. Turn it into prayer in one minute. Lord, I'm tired of holding people. I release right now. I let go that boss in the name of Jesus. I release my husband. I release my wife. I release my co worker. I release my business partner. I release the man of God. I release my head of department. I release my escorts. I release the members in my department. I release Joshua Selman. Make sure you pray. I release everyone who has offended me. Because I want to move forward. I want to move forward. Practice forgiveness. Hallelujah. It says, And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake forgave us. Very quickly, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Okay, Ephesians 4, verse 32 is there. And then give us Luke chapter 6, verse 37. Luke 6, 37. Let's hurry up. Luke 6 37 Luke chapter 6 
verse 37 it says judge not and ye shall not be judged in other words every time you judge people you are scheduling seasons for yourself condemn not and ye shall not be condemned forgive and ye shall be forgiven make sure you practice this make sure you practice this number five very quickly how do i mean quality relationships be tolerant be tolerant forgiveness is different from tolerance forgiveness is somebody's shortcomings that he hopefully will adjust from it tolerance is somebody's personality or a default belief system that may not change you have to incorporate it as part of that person's living there are people i wish i would tell you everybody around you will change there are people who will not change so you switch from forgiveness to tolerance you accommodate that limitation in their life factor it and build a system around it is god speaking to us yes i have many friends all kinds of friends and just like me they are very funny people everybody has all kinds of attributes the same way i am to them too but it takes tolerance there are some things in me unfortunately may not change tolerance you don't you today i like everybody around me to talk but say, i don't talk you don't need forgiveness what do you need tolerance. or you you talk too much i just ask you a question where is where is uh, my trouser you say uh, the other one i didn't ask you about what happened where is my trouser please tolerance your destiny helper may be a talkative if you are tolerant to the talkativeness then you receive the breakthrough everybody in your life cannot be you and cannot be like you if everybody was like me the world would be a terrible place you would think the world would be a nice place no you don't want to know some of the boring aspects of my life this world will be a sad place <laughs> you will only be studying and reading and sleeping what a world I am so happy for people who are not me they add flavor I benefit from the joy of them not being me you must have a high degree of tolerance Colossians chapter 3 please help us 12 and 13 Colossians chapter 3 is called forbearance you must tolerate people put on therefore as the elect of God holy and beloved bowels of mercy kindness humbleness of mind meekness long suffering 13 forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as Christ forgave so also do ye forbearing one another you have business partners you need forbearance are we together you are in your office working you need forbearance in a ministry like this you need forbearance everybody cannot be you brothers and sisters learn this Oh God, change them. Wonderful prayer. But they have their wills. If they don't change, does that mean you will not move forward? Tolerance. Number six. The sixth principle for maintaining quality relationships is that you must be a contributor to the growth of the other party or the parties involved. You maintain relationships by being valuable to the relationship. You must be a contributor. There are parasitic relationships. Relationships are meant for mutual benefit. Maybe not equally mutual in, in terms of degree of contribution. I cannot be your friend and be at a high level with you when you are not contributing anything in my life. Ejimi is my friend. He contributes greatly in my life. I contribute greatly in his life. So there is a basis for continuity. Are we together now? If you are not valuable to a relationship, that relationship's lifespan is very small. It will never. Please hear this. This is true for marriage. It is true for business. It is true for ministry. There are many people who complain and say, Joshua Selman doesn't want to be my friend, doesn't want to be this. And I say, no, no, I want to be your friend. It's just that I am passionate about value. Be a contributor. Money is not the only thing to contribute. Love, kindness, godliness. Are we together now? There are so many things to bring into a relationship. 
not everybody's looking for money in a relationship there are people who have conquered that realm they need love they need value they need understanding they need help you must learn this if you want a guy to come into your life what value are you going to bring I say guy what value are you going to bring even the church and Christ truly speak he doesn't need anything from us but because of his love he limited himself to allow us space to be able to contribute something that's why when we worship and praise him is we 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 are not necessarily adding anything to him but he has limited himself that way so that it can give us room for expression relationships must be mutually beneficial if there are five people in a business and only two are running that business they are the two who will be the closest of friends the rest will just be freelance people around who will feel angry don't be angry in a relationship that you are not bringing quality value please I want us to go back home and think about the reason why our family members do not value us so much the reason why even in the house of God it's true that we love everybody unconditionally but we are not committed to everybody at the same level it is according to contribution say amen you must be a contributor if you are helping me spiritually you will be close to me if you are helping me financially you will be close to me if you are helping me in terms of the love for God if you are helping me fulfill my assignment you will be close to me if you are not doing any of this I love you but you can't expect to be close to me the same way if I'm not contributing meaningfully to your life you love me but I can't be close to you relationships are based on contributions I want you to learn this wanting friends around you to be so committed without anything to bring to the table is flattery brothers and sisters there must be a commitment no matter how little it is it may be prayer it may be love it may be rest sister you may not be educated but you can bring love you can bring patience are we together yes you are the one that when the guy is getting sad he said no calm down it may not be so you are the guy that will say no 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 my dear calm down i know she offended you but take it easy there has to be a contribution you walk with the holy spirit you are rebellious you are disobedient you don't pray no secret place and you say lord why are you not close to me and he says what is all this are you not hearing what apostle is saying you have to be the mutual contribution give me time i give you more of myself become a contributor to the growth of the relationship number seven so we wrap up for tonight practice genuine love the last key to maintaining quality relationship practice genuine love underline the word genuine there are many people whose relationships are purely based on what I will get in as much as I have spoken about value brothers and sisters if the only basis for relating people is what you will get you are a selfish personality whether as a husband as a wife as a man of God as a member as a worker as a career person as a business person it is not always about what you will get it is about who you are are we together my life will be an ugly life if the only people in my life are just those who can contribute to me no while we were yet sinners unable to contribute anything in due season Christ died for us Proverbs chapter 10 verse 12 please quickly Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12 hatred stirred up strife but love covers what let me tell you something brothers and sisters it is one proof that the friend you have whether it's a love relationship or any kind of relationship will last when you truly love somebody you will make very legitimate excuses for their weaknesses it will be difficult for you to find reasons to throw people away if you can throw people easily it's a sign that you don't deserve to be close to them love can cover a multitude of sins I see people in relationships not love really all kinds of relationships and the ease with which they get offended no sir if five people come into your life not love relationship now necessarily five people come into your life none of them can stand two weeks the problem is you not them 
Are we together? Hatred stirred up strife, but love covereth. How many sins? That means there is nothing anybody does to you that cannot be covered when there is genuine love. The secret to peace, all kinds. John 13, 35. John 13, 35. Then give us 1 John 4, 20. 1 John 4, 20. John 13, 35. John 13, verse 35. By this shall how many men? All men know that ye are my disciples. Not if you pray in tongues. Not if you have a Christian name. If ye have love, not for God. Love for one another. Loving God is not necessarily the ultimate proof that you are walking in love. Because it says that if you love God that you do not see. Or you don't love your neighbor that you see. How can you claim you love God that you see? Listen brothers and sisters. This issue of loving one another is something we must indoctrinate ourselves in I, I have told myself i cannot hate anybody in the house of god no impossible impossible truly speaking i'm not just saying it i live a very peaceful life <laughs> apostle why are you angry can you no i've been delivered. been delivered i live a happy and peaceful life peaceful life very peaceful life very peaceful life by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Do you love people or do you use people? You can use people. You can use a relationship. You can use a wife. You can use a husband. You can use a boss. You can use employees. Pastors, you can use members. You can use workers. The workers in this ministry know with all humility that I love them with all my heart. I love the leaders. They know it. I'm lavish about it. I love them with all my heart. How could I ever hate the people that so serve with all their heart? This is why some of us never get the anointing. This is why many of us never command results. Our hearts are full of hatred. There is always one bad story to say. No. First John 4 verse 20 and then we round up. First John 4 verse 20. God has spoken to us tonight. If a man say, even if his name is Joshua Selman, if Joshua Selman says, I love God, like many Christians say, and hated his brother, he didn't say hated, he didn't describe what kind of brother and the offense the brother did. He just said if he hated his brother, please read on if you're a Christian. What is he? He didn't say he's an angry person and God understands. That person is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen, how can he love God that he had not seen? Church, we must not only love Jesus, we must love ourselves. More pastors who we experience levels of the anointing when they switch just from loving God and extend it to loving men any pastor that's why I honor the Lord for the ministers around I'm, I mean Reverend Dr. Tende is here God bless you thank you so much a number of other ministers scattered around every time I see them come visit like this I am very blessed love there are times I pick up my phone and I just send all my pastor friends text messages and I just tell them how are you how is the work the Lord bless you the Lord honor you there are times that I just do it to my friends. Some of you, you never do it. I say, has he ever done it to me? You want a harvest of a seed you are not sowing? No, sir. If you had sown that seed, the friend you used to know, that is now a great man, you would have maintained a relationship that would have blessed you. But when you had privilege, the number he had then that you had, you did not invest in it. And now he has changed his line only those who blessed him have the new line you are not part of them and you are angry and grumbling and say all these pastors i remember when god started helping me a lot of people were offended and said what is all this thing eh? i tried to call apostle he cannot call you call you say protocol he doesn't know me and i say you can imagine two years you have never asked whether god whether koinonia people are eating whether how did you collect offering is god faithful are there demons attacking you can i pray you didn't send any text and then you just hear that god is faithful and you want a prayer request and just call and demand no it's not 
done that way. It's an investment. You don't get anything from it when you don't commit to it. There are people who don't honor anybody. They don't recognize anybody. They don't care. Just call and say, look, I have Bishop Oedipo's number. See, Bishop David Oedipo, let me call. And you call and say, see all these arrogant men of God. I will not pick if I'm him. No, sir. It's not because I hate you. They are busy maintaining the relationships that are interested in them. Please don't make arrogant demands of attention over relationships you are not willing to commit to. A little prayer. I'm not talking of money. A little prayer. Man of God, how are you, sir? Just to find out. Mommy, how are you? Daddy, how are you? Pastor, how are you? It's been three years we've not seen. I hope God is doing well. God bless you and increase you. They are noting it. Even if they don't have time to reply, they are noting it. The day they see that number, there are many numbers I don't have say, but if I see them, I know. I know that this person cares a lot about the ministry. How is Koinonia? Some people are very sarcastic. Greetings here. My name is this. These are my problems. You just list it. Bless you. And I say, what? Just like that? No. There are people who only call when they need help. Sir, um, just to greet you. My mother has come again. No, honestly, uh, my father has come again. No, my sister. Remember the, the thing I told you the other time? You don't remember me? I, I'm sorry. Was it last week? No, I met you June last year now. June last year. I met you and you are reminding me today. No. You must invest in relationships. You must love. Brothers and sisters, I stand by the integrity of God's word. And I tell you this. If you practice these things before last koinonia, it would have changed your life. There are some of you, this is what you need. This is the revelation you need to enter the next level. It's not like the job cannot come. There are many people now that admission will start. You're going to start disturbing our daddy prof and disturbing a lot of other people. Sir, I remember it's me that sent you CV and says, is it because I'm coming for koinonia and you are seeing me like that? You've never done anything. You've never said take five for life and all of that. No, 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 no. Sir, the, the, I, just to let you know that uh, by God's grace, I'll be finishing now. You promised me in 300 level that you'll give me money for, for project. You didn't follow it up, not in prayer, not with wisdom. No. Please learn this. Practice this right now. Call Write the list of the top 10 relevant people in your life and start investing in them and watch what happens to you. Because when a man loves you, everything he has loves you too. If a millionaire loves you, his money loves you too. An anointed man loves you, his anointing will love you. There are anointings that reject people. Yes. That's why people don't receive. We are going to pray and you are going to cry to the Lord and say, Lord, the answer to my challenge will have to be one of these five. Either I have not paid the price knowing you, or I have not genuinely submitted to authority. I have not committed myself to mental transformation. I have not paid the price to be skillful and valuable, or I have not paid the price to build and maintain quality relationships. Please rise up on your feet and let's pray. Thank the Lord for the word you've heard tonight. Lift your voice and begin to bless him. Extraordinary results. Results that defy limitation. These are the systems of the kingdom we engage in. Are you praying? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like us to pray. I've listed these areas. You know the areas where you honestly need to flog it out with God. In the next one minute, please swallow your pride and cry to God and say, I obtain mercy. I obtain mercy. Lord, I have not paid the price to know you. I am lazy spiritually and otherwise. I have not committed myself to pressing into the things of God. There's too much distraction in my life and I make up my mind that I will change from today. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I've not committed myself 
to transiting mentally. I'm still carrying age-old ideas that are destroying me, ideas that are responsible for my pain, ideas that are responsible for the misery in my life. I'm a product of my mindset. I have by a wrong mindset driven good people in my life, driven good opportunities in my life. Lift your voice and pray, I receive grace, I receive grace, I receive grace. No more laziness. From tonight, I commit myself to personal development. Lord, I receive grace to be skillful. I receive grace to be skillful. I receive grace to be skillful. Lord, I receive grace to be excellent. Grace to be competent. Grace to be excellent. Grace to be competent. Grace to be excellent. Grace to be competent. Finally, pray for relationships. Lord, all the areas that you have touched tonight, I receive grace. I declare that I'm free. The Bible says, he who the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. I declare that I'm free from offense. I'm free from bitterness. I'm free from gossiping, backbiting, ill-spoken words against people. I only seek the good of another. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, I let go every offense. I make up my mind that I'm pressing to the place of destiny. And in the name of Jesus, no power of hell will stop me. Hallelujah. One last prayer point. Father, every dimension of result I should have entered, that lack of observing these truths have kept me. I declare that your mercy reopens that door for me. Go ahead, lift your voice and pray. I decree and I declare the mercy of God again. I decree and declare the mercy of God again. I decree and declare the mercy of God again. Are you praying? I decree and declare relationships that I've lost because I did not this understanding. I decree and declare by the mercy of God they are reopened. Business opportunities, financial opportunities, ministerial connections, strategic relationships, connections that would have lifted me bailed me out of trouble stop shame from my life hallelujah I won't harm you with words from my mouth I love you I need you too one more time I won't harm you with words from my mouth, I love you, I need you to survive. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me, I need you to survive. Lord, I stand before your people and we declare connecting with all those who are following from the nations of the earth. And Lord, we declare that we are ready to put these truths to work. In the name of Jesus, we lay our pride tonight. We humble ourselves before you, the Lord of glory. You have brought your word to lift us. The Bible says he sent forth his word. We receive the sent word into our hearts. We commit ourselves to applying the changes that are required. And Lord, we declare that your grace and your mercy will back us up. Let there be results in our lives. We decree and declare that between now and the end of this year, let our lives command strange results. In the name of Jesus Christ, all of the limitations in our lives that grant Satan and demon spirits access to lead and destroy us, we declare by the blood of Jesus that they are closed and closed forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Everyone, please keep standing. You're here tonight, and um, whilst you were hearing me speak, the Holy Spirit was speaking to you and saying that you need to make your ways right. Or especially you are here and you have discovered that offense is eating you up. It has killed your spiritual life. You literally backslid just because of offense and bitterness and hatred 
and you're finding it difficult to let go you are here you want to give your life to jesus you want to make up your life you want to take away these things and say lord i need to start afresh if you're here inside outside any of the overflows please i want you to make your way very quickly we have one minute for you wherever you are make your way to the front thank you jesus someone is responding to this call god bless you someone is responding to this call quickly please if you're coming make way to jesus Go ahead, make your way. Lord, I want to make it right with you tonight. I can't live my life like this. I came for koinonia. I may deceive others, but I cannot deceive myself. Lord, I'm ready to lay everything down. Everything down. Go ahead. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You're still coming outside. Please double up and come. Double up and come. Those online, connect with us wherever you are. And pray the prayer as I lead God's people to pray. Please come, direct them. Direct them, God bless you. I see people coming. Make your way to the front very quickly. Hallelujah. Please come quickly. I'm about to lead them to pray. Thank you. Most of you uh, have given your life to Christ. You are rededicating your life. Some of you are giving your life to Jesus for the first time. Doesn't matter what category you are part of. Please mean this with all your heart. Mean this with all your heart. Jesus is here. And let this be a new beginning for you. Say in the name of Jesus. I lay aside every offense. I lay aside every bitterness every anger every unforgiveness i declare tonight that jesus is lord of my life i hand over my life and everything about me to jesus i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that from tonight i am a changed person from tonight the love of god dwells in me the spirit of god dwells in me no more bitterness no more hatred in the name of jesus the power of sin and satan is broken over my life forever in jesus name lord jesus thank you for this one some of them are handing their lives totally to you and some of them are making up their minds to let go every offense and everything that has held them i decree and declare that honor their decisions and I pray that from tonight, your life will skyrocket to a new dimension of achievement. In the name of Jesus, you will love Jesus and hold on to him, never to replace him by anything and anyone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for making this decision. Please follow the lady waving her hands. She's smiling at you. And you have a few details and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you and thank you very much. Let's honor them. Koinonia, thank you so, so much. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.